On this episode of Doing the Most, we're going to talk about how to etch your glass jugs and carboys. Moment brews and various artists, everything from meat to rose. Big creation, fermentation, and heat creation, doing the most. Over the years, I have come to realize that carboys and jugs are not all made equal. They're not all made from the same mold, they're not made with the same process, and even though they can look identical, their internal volumes can be quite different. And rather than eyeball your must, why not know exactly what's in there? And after watching a lot of YouTube videos and reading a lot of blogs about glass etching, I feel like I've come up with a pretty foolproof way you can accomplish this in your very own home. For marking our carboys, we decided to go with these reusable glass etching stencils. They're pretty cool. They go right on and come right off and seem to hold a pretty good seal. For your viewing pleasure, I added blue dye to the bottom of our carboy, so that way you could kind of see what the liquid level looked like as we work on this project. I added the water here by quart. Four quarts, one US gallon. I felt like that gave me better control over exacting the liquid level. And then the stencils just kind of go right on. I hadn't done a glass etching project since high school. So one important thing I learned while working on this was to make sure that everything overlaps and is really pressed down. You don't want any airspace down underneath where the etching cream we're gonna use can creep underneath there and get on exposed glass. Use your thumbnails, really make sure everything is down tight. We're gonna use this etching cream. It seems to be relatively easy to find. It's called Armor Etch. I'll put a link to that down in the description where you can support our channel by buying it through Amazon. It's relatively cheap and reusable. So another thing I learned while working on this project is it's best to keep it moving because if you just put it on there and leave it to sit, you're gonna get some patchiness or cloudiness in your etching. So the method I used was to move it around for three minutes, making sure to go in every direction, every angle I could, let it sit for three minutes, and then scrape off all the excess. This is reusable lots and lots of times, so you don't wanna waste any of this. Get as much of that back into the container as you can. And then I chose to rinse it off in the bathtub. You might want to do this whole project in your bathtub because honestly, moving five gallon carboys full of liquid gets pretty exhausting after a while. After that's complete, remove the tape, remove the stencil and dry it off. Looky there. The process from there is pretty simple. Just repeat every gallon. So fill that on up, put our stencil on, Cover it with the cream, move it around for three minutes, let it sit for three minutes, scrape it off, rinse it off, dry it off. And it really does do an incredible job if you make sure to get it down nice and tight. I'm very, very pleased with the look of this. So you get it, gallon after gallon, mark your carboy. There's a pretty elegant solution to knowing exactly where your liquid line needs to fall in your carboys. As I've learned recently, buying new carboys and comparing them to the vintage carboys I've been using, even though they look about the same size, they can be off by up to a pint when filled to the neck. So it's helpful to know exactly how much liquid is in your carboy. Now I know what you may be thinking. BC, I only brew in one gallon jugs and I wanna mark my jugs. What can I mark on my jugs? We've got you covered. No worries, put that sucker on a scale and start pouring in some honey, because you can mark your one gallon jugs by honey volume. Now there can be minor variances in the moisture content of your honey. To mark this jug, I mixed clover, wildflower, and alfalfa honeys that I had laying around. That way I could get a sort of average volume by weight with a few different kinds of honey given consideration. I weighed out a pound and made a hash mark where the pound was. Then, teared my scale and kept on moving. I made hash marks for four pounds of honey because generally you're not gonna have more than four pounds of honey in a one gallon batch. So, it made the most sense to me. I made sure to get my tape down really firm, then three minutes of moving our etching cream around and three minutes to sit. Then I added some numbers for clarity. Rinse and repeat. And I think this one came out really, really cool. I love the idea of being able to pour honey into a hash mark and know how much honey is in the jug. These reusable stencils worked really well, and I'm really pleased with how this project turned out. It is incredibly easy to mark your carboys and demijohns for various volumes. And since this etching cream goes for miles, you can mark all kinds of stuff with them. Gallons of liquid, pounds of honey, 
bees for your mead, a hog as a steed, a dog with a need, or document some memes. Some things to remember about this process. One, make sure everything with your stencil overlaps and there's no place for etching cream to get up underneath your stencil. Number two, keep that etching cream moving for at least three minutes so that way you get no artifacts or cloudiness in your etching. Number three, let it sit for three minutes. That gives it plenty of time to do its work. Number four, remove any excess etching cream and put it back in the bottle. You can reuse it a ton of times. And number five, rinse everything really well and dry everything really well. Well, that's it, easy peasy. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please hit that thumbs up and let us know in the comments if you've got ideas on ways that you can etch your home brewing gear to make it more effective and practical. You can follow us on Instagram and Pinterest at doing the most okay. Our website is doingthemost.org and we have a Discord server at discord.doingthemost.org. Big shout out to our patrons and YouTube members. Y'all invest in this channel and make all of this content possible. Until next time, happy brewing and stay safe.